Hey guys, Mustang here. Today I want to take a quick shot at a common question I see asked in a lot of the groups, which is, should I buy a full power PEC 15 or should I buy a Maul? Uh, too long didn't watch. 90% of the time, I'm going to recommend a full power PEC 15. Stick around and watch the rest of this if you want to find out if you're in the other 10%. Uh, some nice features of the PEC 15. The main one is the focusable illuminator. You can dial that thing in and get fantastic range out of it. And most of all, you can do that without getting a bunch of splash off of other stuff. That comes into play if you're using a clip-on or um, other cases where you want to zoom in and just look at something, not everything around it. So um, that uh, illuminator is a, uh, the focusable illuminator is really nice on the PEC 15. They're also cheaper. Prices kind of go up and down based on uh, availability, supply and demand being what, is, what it is. These things kind of go up and down in price. These kind of hover right around MSRP. Um, the illuminator on the mall is also very nice. It is uh, typically smoother than a PEC 15. That being said, you can't dial it in and focus it down. So in applications where you're using a clip-on again or other cases where you want to be able to crank that beam down, that's just not an option with the mall. Um, for those kind of cases, you need a PEC-15. Again, I have both. Um, my PEC-15 is on my rifles where I run a clip-on. My mall stays on other stuff. So who are the other 10% where I'd recommend a mall? The primary use for a mall, in my opinion, a civilian mall and civilian applications is um, cases where you're going to be really hard on it. My scars break the heck out of everything. Uh, I have a SCAR 17 SBR, which broke a purse 3. My SCAR 20 has broken other stuff. In those cases, I would not recommend a PEC 15. Um, again, there's just not good ways to service these outside the factory, and uh, they're, they're not going to service it for you. The mall, on the other hand, comes with a one-year warranty, and on top of that, there's at least a chance for getting it serviced beyond that. Um, I have never seen a used mall broken uh, on the secondary market, not to say they're not out there, but um, I've not seen one. I have seen broken PEC-15s, I've even received a broken PEC-15 uh, on the secondary market. So um, I think it's cheaper for BE Myers just to, if, if somebody breaks one, to fix it and move on with life rather than have uh, broken lasers that cost close to $3,000 floating around out there. Um, making customers grumpy. I think they'd rather just clean those up and, and move on with life. Um, that being said, these PEC-15s are very tough in, for what they are, um, but at the end of the day, it is a polymer housing, and again, there's just not a good way to service them. Uh, there are some guys out there that'll fix them, but it's always going to be a unit that's been opened up by somebody other than the factory if you do break one and get it fixed. Um, Again, the mall, if you manage to break one, you had to try really hard. And uh, I've, again, I've not, just not seen many of them floating around. I haven't seen any of them floating around out there that have been broken. So if you're putting them on a, on a rifle that's going to be hard on them, like a SCAR, or even if you're doing uh, night vision running guns or other applications where you're going to be crashing into trees or uh, hopping in and out of vehicles, shooting hogs and stuff, um, I would at least consider getting a PEC-15, excuse me, I'd just consider getting a mall. The PEC-15 is great, but, you know, it's a polymer thing, and if you crack it, you have, you have real problems. So, um, in cases like that, I would, I would consider a mall. For, uh, new shooters just getting into this stuff, which is, again, who this video is aimed at, um, most of the time, I'm going to recommend just get a PEC-15. It's kind of like the, the Glock 19 of lasers, if you will. You're going to get a solid product. Uh, note that not all illuminators are created equal on these. Some of them look kind of like a Petri dish where you got swirls and other artifacts in them. Uh, maybe look like a pizza or something where you just got... It's just a noisy illuminator. Others will have a strong band of illumination but then uh, the edges maybe uh, uh, have less illumination in them. It's, I don't know what that's from. Maybe how they, um, how the, the laser emitter and the glass line up, I'm really not sure. But I've seen it on a few of them where you have a, a really strong band of illumination uh, going from like the bottom left to the top right. But then, um, you know, 20, 30, 40% of the illuminator is just not as, as strong as the rest. So I recommend 
getting a picture of your exact laser under nods pointed at an object where you can see your pattern and make sure uh, that you're happy with it for the money you're spending and there's tons of good sources to get these from vet your sources make sure you're getting it from somebody reliable because again if uh, you get a bad one or if it shows up broken or something you have a real problem uh, the mall in my opinion is a little more a uh, little more consistent in their product i've not seen any bad ones um, I've, I've had a couple of these i've had many of these i've had uh, pack 15 a's i've had a purse three i've had all, all kinds of other stuff um, but again between these two um, uh, be meyer seems to be a little more consistent that being said they're also a lot more expensive so uh, kind of the the ultimate advice i can give if you're a new shooter trying to pick between these two is to go to a night vision shoot, a competition, a cola warrior, a night vision running gun, and see what everybody else has. Most guys in the community will be glad to let you check out what they brought, and you can look at it under your nods and decide for your application uh, kind of which way to go. So that would be my ultimate advice. There's tons of videos showing the difference in, in illumination quality between a PEC and a mall and other units also. There's pictures, videos showing all that stuff. But the ultimate way to uh, look at these is to go out and, and look at them yourself. Uh, one final note is that I hear lots of guys saying that the uh, ergonomics on a mall are um, super top-notch great. In my opinion, opinion, it's kind of a wash between the two. You can memorize the positions on this laser just fine. Um, the button's not hard to hit. You can mount a remote switch, whatever. Uh, the ergonomics on the mall are also okay you've got uh a and b buttons and high you know low medium and high and all that it's it's also a good system that being said i don't think one is significantly better than the other uh i, I think the ergonomics on them are, are 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 about about equal so far as usability um that being said you know get one order in your system and, and be ready to use it in the dark because you can't see it with your nods on everything's fuzzy up close so um that's about it again 90 percent of the time if you're a new shooter i'm going to recommend a peck 15 if you think you're going to do something crazy with it get them all and uh you know whatever you do uh get out and use it and learn your system um if you, have, if you disagree with any of this, feel free to drop a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, until then, we'll see you guys later.